Hi viewers, uh, this is Ashish from Chennai Times. Today we have here with us uh, actress uh, Dignandana Suryavanshi. Uh, she's very familiar to all of us, you know, from the film Dhanasira Sine uh, uh Welcome to this uh, interview, uh, Dignandana. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad. So, uh, Dignandana has recently come out with uh, a video, a very short video, uh, talking about one of the issues uh, uh, that we all have been talking about recently, which is uh, depression. So let's start with that, uh, Digantna. What was the whole idea behind uh, this video? Uh, is it an artistic expression trying to create awareness about this issue, or did you do a lot of research and you know then decided to do this uh, video? Um, see, uh, I have always felt and acknowledged all these feelings um, you know as I mean as as a human being I feel like it's very very important to address these things um, they are stereotyped as negative thoughts and um, people aren't welcoming and you know people are like you know just some kind of madness this is unhealthy and stuff like that but as a person I think this is this is one area which I feel this whole time has been a lot about you know lockdown it's everywhere you know whether it's Chennai or Mumbai it's everywhere people are depressed how you address it is something that's very important I feel more than I didn't want to I'm, I'm a huge advocate for mental health you know I feel like everything that's going in here is something that's going to decide for you you know if you're happy if you're feeling like you want to be doing something or there's something that's kind of making you feel low it's eventually going to reflect in everything that you do whether that's your relationship that's your physical health that's your work or that's anything else and it's so funny that it's so it's just taken for granted you know people think that you generally have to go to a psychiatrist when you're probably mad that's how it's conceived and that's how people relate to madness and they think that you know only when people are actually um, you know underprivileged or they're mentally sick that's when they go to a doctor I feel this whole time lockdown itself was spinning me back and back and back and back I live with my family of course and I discuss almost everything with them so this one day I was telling them I was like what about people who are probably living with their families but they're kind of introvert or they don't want to talk about their issues or there's some kind of a communication thing that's going on what do you do you know like so many negative thoughts that come out of it and it's hard to see if i'm physically hurt if there's blood coming from my hand you're going to see it and you're going to have empathy and sympathy everything for me right but if there's something going on in here i'm not too sure if you'll be able to see it so this video was for everyone to um acknowledge what they're feeling not be guilty of it at all and at the end of the day understand that it's their body and mind and they should take care of it and this is absolutely self-help you know even when you decide that you need somebody's help is also self-help i mean until and unless i don't tell you you wouldn't know so this came out of like so many thoughts and i just wanted to do it in the right way because it can be conceived and perceived really differently which i didn't want so there was a lot of thought that went into it for sure Okay, okay. Uh, so, how did you spend your lockdown? Uh, you know, uh, I have also read that you know uh, you also write. You're also an author. Uh, so, uh, was it? Uh, did you uh, kind of spend a lot of time writing something, or like, did you spend time, you know, reading books? If so, what kind of books did you read, and how did you spend your lockdown? I've been painting actually. I've been painting. I think that's just so refreshing. I think the last time that I painted was in school, and that to an eighth standard probably. So my papa bought a bunch of canvas, and he was really unsure of me painting. And he's like, "You're gonna be a mess." I was like, "I'm not gonna be a mess. I'm gonna prove it to you." He said, "Why don't you practice on a paper and then probably try it on a canvas?" So we had like chit chat about it, and I said, "No, I'm too cool. I'm gonna go straight on the canvas." Make quite a few paintings, um, and I have been writing. So I've been, I started writing, um, I'm actually writing a script. So I, it, it was almost like a thing that I wanted to complete. I'm like, this is going to give me a feeling of accomplishment. And I'm so looking forward to have it like bounded in my hands. 
and that's 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 what took most of my time but i'm glad because that just puts my energy in the right use i feel otherwise it's so frustrating i can't step out of the house there's nothing you can do yeah so let's uh, talk a little bit about films uh, and uh, you know uh, how close you are to chennai uh, i think uh, during the shoot of hippy i think uh, you spent a lot of time in chennai uh, and then again you acted you made I your did. you made your debut uh, in hollywood uh, with uh, danasura sinhala so let's talk a little bit about chennai you know shooting in chennai how is the experience lovely chennai has been uh, has been good luck for me to put it simple cuz um, so hippy of course is a telugu film my first south indian film but the producers the like the thanu sir is from chennai of course and it was their first venture in telugu uh, so the first time i did visit um, you know down south for like work was chennai so i was like and it was that one day and everything did go wrong the entire team was from chennai so i was you know most of the time because krishna sir rd sir brinna master in fact everyone so i thought that we have like a mini chennai wherever we go so i i would hear them more and the culture and everything i just feel that there's some kind of good luck with chennai definitely i have enjoyed shooting there i've enjoyed the people I love South Indian food, so every time I'm there, I'm really sorted. You know, like some places you go and you really don't know what to eat. But I'm a huge dosa and idli fan. Like I've been eating that since I was a kid. Uh, cool thing. Great. Uh, any places that you can recollect? Uh... In Chennai. Yes. Uh, to name the one friends, that would be difficult. So I live mostly in Green Park, and we shoot everywhere around the city. So it's usually fun, but um, that's the area that I've spent most of my time in. Okay. So uh, tell us about working in Danasurasi Nehrgale, working with Harish Kalyan, and you know, a very young team. How was it? Uh, and uh, uh, did you kind of uh, get the uh, get the output that you expected with your Tamil debut or? or are you looking for more films tell us about your upcoming tamil films have you signed anything yeah let's start with uh, uh, your debut film uh, dhanasurasi nerkle dhanasurasi nerkle is um is something that happened really quick so i remember that you know generally the whole format of a film is that you do a meeting and then you probably do a little for you know you chat about your role and then you know there is this mutual conversation how it goes it fits and stuff like that i heard um, nanasudasi nerkle on a phone call literally i was in hyderabad for something else and they were already shooting and they called me up and they said this is the script and you know you fit the part and i had a few questions here and there and the entire but I signed it digitally. I mean, I got the contract on my email, and so I hadn't met anybody honestly. But there was some kind of vibe. I did see Harish's previous film, Spade Raj. I'd seen that. So the moment I heard about this, you know, I went up and I, I, I wanted to watch the film first. And it was, you know, um, him, how he is, and how the entire team was. From what the kind of narration that I had, I enjoyed it. I mean, you know, sometimes from what you hear to what it turns out to be. it's just another thing right but for me the narration was very very important i was like my role looks quirky you know and not a lot of people write roles like these for women especially in a commercial film and stuff so i was interested it was quick and uh, uh you know the interesting part is i didn't have the time to do my dialogues that's something that i was really worried about so whenever i go back to drn like think about the former days i'm thinking that i'm literally at the airport and they're telling me that we're shooting two days later one day later in fact because i was there on a saturday and we're shooting on a monday and i'm like like i have dialogues right like why aren't you sending me the script and then i got the script and there are like huge lines i i remember the first minute i was just looking at it and i'm thinking how is this going to happen because with some interestingly um what you write is not necessarily what you pronounce you know like there's a slight difference 
So I was like, send me voice memos. I need to sit with the assistant director and sort it out. So the first day, it was, I was really um, kind of caught up in my head because with Hippie and most of my other films, I at least have like two days in advance and I know exactly what's happening. This was rush, rush, rush. But then I think that's what some films are, right? I enjoyed, I enjoyed the process, no doubt. Uh, are you planning any new projects in Tamil? I wish and I hope so. So before lockdown, we were in talks with a few. Right now, even if it really, you really can't predict because nothing's really moving anymore and um, shooting because there is no shoot that's happening and anything can be concrete like to a level that it does get announced and people get to know when, when we know when we'll be able to shoot. So I think that's where we're stuck now. But I definitely look forward to doing more Tamil films. And I feel there's still a vacuum of um, the fact that maybe I want to do more films where I feel I'd be able to justify that project a little bit more. So I still have that th feeling that no, no, I think there's, you know, there's, there's better. Like, let's just plan this a little more properly. And honestly, you know, sometimes some films and some um, projects are about work. Like it's plain simple about, okay, let's do this film. This is my timeline of what it looks like. Even though I'm doing Hindi and Telugu films and stuff, there's this constant thing at the back of my head that, you know, let's just start going on a set of a Tamil film. Like that's a thing. And that comes from a place I think that doesn't come from my mind, really. That comes from my heart. So I'm an instinct person. And now that I know that I feel in that way, I want to do more Tamil films. There's this. You know, there's no getting away from that. Great. Uh, so you have also spoken about uh, Rajni and your, you know, um, um, you know, your admiration for Rajni, and you have spoken about, you know, uh, you know, watching uh, Kabali. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, Rajni Khan. Huge fan. Big time. Uh, his story as a human being, um, his screen presence, you know, the way that he walks and he carries himself. Um, it's, I don't know, for some reason it gives me goosebumps as an audience. And I'm not saying like the 22 year old me sitting here in an interview with you and telling you this is how I feel, this is how I felt even 10 years ago. You know, like a kid sitting on the couch with popcorns in hands telling Papa, why haven't we watched this film in the theater? And my father goes like, you know, this is a dubbed film. And I'm like, what is this dubbed film? So I, it takes me back to all of that conversation, you know. Um, there's some kind of attraction, you call it aura, persona, anything. But it um, there's something about him that, you know, and I'm sure that a lot of people let me feel so and that's why he is who he is. So... So, can you go back and remember the first film of him that you watched? Uh, wow, I can't. I saw one of his Hindi film actually, uh, him and Amitabh. So I can't remember the name of the film, but I I watched it really young. I'm gonna have to Google, but it was a Hindi film of his. Okay. And then the whole. South Indian films and stuff. I'm like, oh, it's him! And then, and that's exactly why I got confused. So I told my father, why didn't we skip this film? It's like such a good film. So my father was like, wait, it's, you know, it's in another language you'll not be able to understand. So I was like, no, but then it, it comes in Hindi here. So then he's like, no, it's dubbed. <laughs> Which film is that? Um, wait, I want to tell you right away. Uh... Uh, 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 sometime I know the film. I'd seen Hum. Okay. So that that's means... actually originally a '91 film. So okay. obviously I was not born then. But I watched it on TV because my parents and everyone is like a huge okay. fan of like okay. '90s and '80s films. Okay. 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 Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, talking a little bit about Big Boss, uh, why didn't you tell us about Salman, uh, your interaction with him? And, and did you kind of, you know, since you were there in Big Boss, you know, did you kind of get a feel, uh, you know, during the lockdown that you were back in the house? <laughs> kind of feeling did you have? 
Big Boss has been a um, once in a life experience, you know. I don't think that I can have that again or I'd like to have that again. Because you know, it's just once and it it should not or can't happen anytime again. Um so I was 18, I turned 18 in the Big Boss house, you know. So my initial excitement with the show was that what independence I'm turning 18 amazing things can't get better and stuff like, like that i think that show kind of made me realize what my real opinions are because sometimes we're so influenced with what other people are saying that original opinions kind of get lost but there i didn't really have anybody and i had to make the choices that i felt like were right and stuff like that i think it did go well with me it was such a huge check on patience <laughs> But you know I think every Saturday was such a breathing thing cuz the months would come and I'd be like this is amazing like could you just stay for a couple of more hours it's okay if it's virtual but we're all kind of like frustrated seeing each other you're such a relief and he has been uh, he's been motivating you know he was the first person who told me that you know you should do films and I was doing a lot of television then and then that's where it took off from so he is uh, you know not a lot of people really think um great things about other people or want them to do better things in life but he's uh, he's honest with his opinions and he's been very supportive so i'd always remember that like that's great connect yeah did you get um, a kind of uh, same feeling you know during this lockdown worse <laughs> so you know there's something now this is the first time that i have realized that big boss was a good place i'll tell you why cuz somewhere in the back of my head i knew that this was going to end you know like i know that there will be a day in jan that even if i last the longest i'm going to be out of this place here in this situation it just doesn't seem to end i'm like like i like i some days i'm like wasn't it like 15 days and then a month and then two months and then three months and we're we're in august now so it's insane i think it's more traumatic cuz this is real life you know i think there we were more so i always thought that we were like we didn't have the facilities that we deserved in the big boss house i don't feel that anymore i'm like no that house is good uh thank you so much for joining us you know and sharing your experiences working in tamil Thank talking you for about, having me. Talking about Rajini Khan, talking about Salman, your experiences in Big Boss. Thank you so much once again, and we'll catch up soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you in Chennai soon. Hopefully, yeah. when things open up with something better. Thank you, Digan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.